So topic number one, we have some pretty encouraging news regarding a vaccine um, with COVID-19. Of course, I know this is rehashed content or rehashed information. I think this news article has been going, doing the rounds in various different um, guises over the last couple of weeks. But it's just encouraging to know that there is some light in the tunnel. Now, whether or not this vaccine comes about in a year, two years time, I could not give the scoobiest about, I could not give the simplest shit. I'm just thankful that there's a there are people working for our best interest somewhat um, out there in the field of science trying to get a vaccine, trying to get something that works in order for us to resume our lives in, you know, to some level of normality. Because, you know, I can't take this anymore. You know, I'm not sure about you guys, but being cooped up at home, not being able to go and do the things that I enjoy, <clears throat> not being able to go to the places that I love and just essentially living a pretty closeted life isn't a life that I want. I was always a bit of a hermit always a bit of a loner but this enforced lonerism isn't fun right it's like it's like um organized fun at work <clears throat> everyone likes talking to their colleagues everyone loves a free drink everyone loves a free meal but being forced to go to the thing in in the in underneath the guise of team building right it can get very very annoying and very frustrating i know it can it can be for myself but what i would give i would give my left nut to do a bit of team bonding at some crappy corny overly lit bowling alley somewhere what i would give to go to some really corny cottage somewhere and do some sort of cringy pasta parcel team building thing i would give my left earlobe for that shit right now because I'm missing being around strangers. I'm missing the the boom, boom, boom basing sounds of a club system. I'm missing the sweat, the confusion, the copious amounts of urine splattered all over the floor of a nightclub. I need that in my life sooner rather than later. And hopefully this news is a good indication of it. So from The Guardian, it says Oxford COVID vaccine works in all ages trials suggest it says the following in the article one of the world's leading COVID-19 experimental vaccine procedure produces an immune response in older adults as well as young which is great to hear um, raising hopes of protection for those most vulnerable to the coronavirus that caused social and economic chaos around the world so I'm guessing they're announcing this because um, I'm assuming there was some sort of idea that they were gonna what just like forget about um our older uh population and just say hey we're gonna make a vaccine for people under 50 if you're over 50 you're fucked that is mad i think if that's okay i'm not sure why they're mentioning it but it's great to hear that this vaccine is going to apply to all article continues neither oxford university nor its commercial partner astrazeneca would release the data from the early trial showing the positive effects which are being submitted to a peer-reviewed journal but astrazeneca confirmed the basic finding about the vaccine it's called az1222 <clears throat> which was shared at a closed academic meeting. The phase two trials have shown that people over the age of six, 56, sorry, some over 70, produce the same sort of antibody response as younger volunteers. Whether older people will be protected, as always, has been key question for the vaccines being developed, the body's natural immune system, and therefore its ability to fight any virus weakens with age, which is why the COVID date for it rises in older people. But what, if that's the case, were they thinking of just making a vaccine that only works for young people? That is insane if that's the case. I guess they have to pick the lesser of both evils, isn't it? What would you rather, save the majority of the population or only one segment of the population? Dark, but that's a question a lot of scientists are probably having to um, wrestle with over time. It continues here. The data also shows that fewer side effects refer to the scientists as re reaction genesisity. React, reactogenicity right were reported in older volunteers which is encouraging although that can mean fewer of them reported issues such as the score sore arm it's encouraging to see the um, immunogenicity responses were similar between older and younger adults and that re reaction reactogenicity was lower in older adults where the COVID-19 disease severity is higher. The results further build the body of evidence that the safety and immunogenicity of AZ1222 said an AstraZeneca spokeswoman. Um, uh, the vaccine that works is seen as a game changer in the battle against coronavirus, which has killed more than 1.15 million people, shut the swaths of the global economy and turned normal life upside down for billions of people. However, if you think the first vaccine will be fully positive, they may be instead reduced to severity of illnesses so that people avoid hospital and deaths are reduced. They may also not last so that boosters will be needed. AstraZeneca said that, I hope the vaccine may be ready for limited use within 
in the coming months. We anticipate an, F um, an FSC readouts from phase two first trials between now and the end of the year. And if approved within countries, doses of the potential vaccine could be available to use before the end of the year, said a spokesperson. Wow, good, encouraging to hear. However, experts outside the company, the UK Health, Sec Health Secretary, Hamat Hanok, expect not to be available until 2021. Um, asked if people could receive a vaccine this year. Hanok told the BBC, I don't rule that out, but it's not my central expectation. Who would assume again? What what's what's with this fanciful thinking? Who really thought they were going to get a vaccine this year? That's insane. By all accounts, even receiving a vaccine by the end of the year is um, really revolutionary, right? I think the quickest turnaround for a vaccine was somehow somewhere under the ten year mark, right, or something crazy like that. So for us to get a vaccine for a virus that no one knew existed prior to, um, you know, prior to its spread. It's quite crazy within two years. That's a really, really good turnaround or 18 months, whatever it may be. Um, it continues here. Hanok said the vaccine was not ready, but he was preparing logistics for a possible rollout, mostly in the first half of 2021. The AstraZeneca has um, committed to mass manufacturing as a capacity of 3 billion doses, which equates to enough for 1.5 billion people globally getting the two-dose vaccine. It has also signed deals with manufacturers in other countries, such as India. The final trials, phase three, looking to see the significant difference in numbers of deaths between those vaccinated and those who are not, are taking place in six countries. Trials in the US which was paused after a volunteer in the UK became ill have resumed and the other country participating are South Africa, Brazil, Japan and India. The vaccine is expected to be one of the first from the big pharma to secure the regulatory approval along with one from Pfizer and BioNTech or BioNTech. Um, work be work uh, began on the co Oxford vaccine in January called AZ1222 or CHADOX1 um, COVID-19, the viral vector vaccine is made from a weakened version of the common cold virus that causes infections in chimpanzees. Stephen Evans, a professor of uh, pharma, pharma, how do you say that? Pharmacopedology in London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Amazing. And imagine going to London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. That's so cool. Cautioned that no conclusions about the efficacy the efficacy, sorry, the vaccine should be drawn until the data has been published. He said, in order to comment properly on this, we need to see the data, he said. It is encouraging that the investigators suggest that the immune responses measured in the blood show, seem to show efficacy uh, both uh, above as well as below the age of 70. The later phases um, are needed to see if the immune responses translate into a clinical efficacy, efficacy, I don't want to call it efficacy, efficacy, right? In preventing infection, this will involve much larger numbers and it is wise to not be so optimistic until the trials have been completed. Raised antibody levels in the blood indicated but did not guarantee protection from the virus multiplying in the body, he said. So, encouraging signs. Again, <clears throat> I think we're going to see vaccines a lot sooner than a lot of these uh, medical professionals are basically um, saying, mostly because of the industries involved in the money at stake. I think sports and live events are going to do whatever is in their power to push the vaccine forward. Or if not, they're going to definitely be in a, they're definitely going to be within the field of um, rapid testing, which is happening quite often, especially for most sports teams, right? The rapid testing where you're getting tested throughout the day are various points um, that you are basically going if you're a team and traveling together on one bus staying in one location not intermingling with people outside the building similar to what they did in the NBA with a bubble so I can see that going forward right if you're Coachella and you can't risk postponing your event again to 2022 you're going to then need to implement some kind of rapid testing to make um, the event somewhat safe if you don't have a vaccine on board and that's the most that they can do but again the vaccines for the majority of population is a go for myself I'm not really bothered about the conspiratorial aspect of it um, I will much rather give away my so-called uh personal liberties or privacies momentarily to get a vaccine to return to normal life because i'm under the illusion i'm under no illusion that my privacy has already been invaded they have all the information they want on me i'm on every single social media platform or it was prior i don't have a facebook anymore but already that data is out there it's too late to take that back um the horse is already bolted there's no point in now deciding this is where my line is drawn with this virus out there that's allowing me that's not allowing me to kind of go about my everyday life so i'm not really having that much of an issue with it in that regard but i'd love to know what you guys think regarding the vaccine one person who does have an issue with it is is the legendary the iconic and the somewhat controversial buju banton who had the this to say regarding vaccines 
<laughs> and the wearing of mask, especially within Jamaica. Hear him out. Well, someone saw it, I ask if everything all right. I tell the brethren, no, everything not nah, all right. And everything can all right. Who want done this mask wearing bullshit in a Jamaica? <laughs> who not dead and who not go dead just for just live? With either you intellectual fool trying to tell us how to live our life. You are so smart, why you haven't find a cure for cancer? Good point. We are both all taught in a line and putting the Jamaican people in abject fear and driving us all to poverty. Exactly. What have you done for all those who you have laid off and made them business close early? Exactly. Jamaican people need to wake up. I'm done with the fuck, Craig. Jamaican people need to wake up. I'm not wearing no mask. Come me now wear no mask. Me now wear no mask. Love it. And then let's next clip. <laughs> They taught you to love Michael Jackson. Then they taught you to hate Michael Jackson. True. They taught you to love Bill Cosby. Then they taught you to hate Bill Cosby. Uh-huh. Don't you see that they have been lying to us for all these times? So Ooh. why should we believe them now? Why? How oh, ironic it is that this, this virus actor is more intelligent than man. It like it move and follow in certain individuals wherever they go. My exactly, this virus doesn't it doesn't exist in, uh, in daytime, but it suddenly comes out in the night. If you leave the if you leave the pub just before ten, it doesn't catch you. If you leave after ten, ah. people, only better wake up because we're going to find out. First and foremost, Jamaicans on 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 a selling a vote, you know. And from on a selling a vote, you know, no sense. So anything can happen right now. Why is up and stand up on the last chance before we reach the precipice? Ooh, why is up and stand up? <laughs> Top boy. <laughs> My love for you supersede all that this world has to offer. I will not join the other entertainers and trick you. I will not lead you down a path of destruction. I've always been sincere and true to you, my people. A lot of people are benefiting by touting and pushing my people down to a path that is totally destructive. Mm -hmm. Here in Jamaica, here in America, I don't care. My life is not mine. It has never been. So hear me, my people. While I'm here with you, stand up, you know. <laughs> I agree with him. Again, it's maybe somewhat woo-woo and conspiratorial, conspiratorial. But again, much like something I'm going to speak about later with the clubs and stuff, there is a lack of acceptance of other people having other points of view and opinions regarding what's going on with COVID-19. It seems like um, some people have this hard time wrestling the fact that some people just view it differently and they should be allowed to view it differently based on whatever conclusion they come to, based on the information points that they receive. Whether or not you think what they're receiving is nonsense, I think especially considering the bad job collectively the governments around the world have done in dealing with COVID-19, you are within your rights to be a bit sceptical about the approach and what's necessary and what's needed and, you know, some of the things that have happened in the kind of event and the backdrop of it and all these sort of things. You're allowed to kind of question these things. And I think the fact that we have these people that exist like Buju Benton and other folk, right? The pandemic guys out there who are, you know, again, batshit crazy. The QAnon people that are doing their thing, they're batshit crazy. It's it's all right that these people exist. Whether or not they should be, um, you know, main points of information dissemination is another question. But again, I would argue that it's probably just as harmful sitting there listening to everything Sky News say, CNN, MSBC, BBC, and taking everything they're saying for gospel. You should be... You should have some level of skepticism to everything that's been reported out there, especially considering the bad job most of the Western countries have done in dealing with COVID-19. That's just your right as a human being. You should allow yourself some level of skepticism because these people don't have your best interest at mind. They don't care about you and I. Most of the things are open, like, you know, why are we playing football right now? Why, again, for myself, being a good, you know, being a sports fan and an avid follower of Manchester United, I welcome the distraction of being able to watch um, Premier League football, Champions League football every week. But why is sports on at the moment? If the, why are they playing football if we can't go back to our offices? Why are they playing football if we can't go back to nightclubs? Why are they playing football if us as fans can't go back into the stadiums? Then you get to the bare bones of it and you actually analyse a bit more. You realise, ah, oh, look at the money that's involved. Look at the refunds that um, the English Premier League will have to give to the um, TV rights companies if, they don't, if they're not able to broadcast the games. So the short-term loss in terms of the um, failure for the teams to get gates tickets is being offset by some of the monies that they gave for the tv companies and then look at what they've done recently with the introduction of these pay-per-view games where you pay 14.99 to follow your team which is insane considering what most clubs what most supporters play for their season tickets and the you know the the kits have still been coming out like clockwork 
um, some teams like my United, for instance, haven't been you know investing as heavily as they should be into the team, but they're still requiring you to purchase new kits to watch them pay per view. There's all these really sketchy things that are going on. So I would be you would be um well within your rights to be a bit skeptical about uh, people going around telling you when to wear a mask, whether or not to take a vaccine, if it's mandatory or not. You should have your third eye open and maybe listen to a bit more Budrew Banton.